let's see, Lucia, Ben, uh, Matt, and uh, Tiffany, thank you so much for joining me today. Congratulations on Jessica's Big Little World. It's a, it's a fun you. series uh, that's spinning off of uh, Craig of the Creek. Uh, why don't, uh, Tiffany, tell us a little bit about it. Um, I am so excited. I think we're all very excited for y'all to check it out. Jessica's Big Little World, like you said, is a spinoff of Craig the Creek. Um, Jessica is Craig's little sister uh, on Craig the Creek and on Jessica's Big Little World. Uh, our show focuses on um, Jessica's day-to-day -day life as she tries to overcome her challenges as a little kid and she's trying to become a big kid. So she has a lot of big kid problems that she's trying to uh, conquer. And this and, is a preschool show. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, There was a lot of uh, fun little moments of, I think what I really liked about it was uh, she's trying to complete these tasks that to us as adults seem very arbitrary and very regular, but they're they're really big and really like large and they, they seem like mountains that she needs to conquer. Um, Lucia, tell us a little bit about voicing her and, and about, you know, her and what she's facing in the series. So Jessica, like Tiffany said, is a little kid, but with the help of small uncle and big Jessica and all of her family and friends is trying to become a big kid. It's been really fun to be able to voice her because she has so much energy, so much creativity, and it's just fun to be able to like not really have to be something I'm not. She kind of is similar to me like if I were to like take myself my personality take it up to like a hundred <laughs> um she's funny she's she's a little bit crazy but it's fun and like I said in the beginning it's just about her becoming a big kid and learning different lessons and developing different skills in order to do that yeah, and and in developing her character, obviously we saw her before and on Craig of the Creek, which is uh, done very very well. Matt and Ben, was it set up in a way for a spinoff to happen, or did that kind of organically happen as the series progressed? It was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty organic. Uh, it was not something we necessarily had on our radar, although we love Jessica and Tiffany was vital in uh, creating that character. She, she did the earliest episodes with Jessica and really helped us figure her out. Um, but it was the network who approached us with the idea of expanding um, into this spinoff with Jessica. And we were uh, super excited to embrace the opportunity uh, to reach a new, uh, a younger audience with this. Other, uh, you know, Craig is six to 11, but this uh, hits even younger kids introduces them to the world and then maybe they can graduate to craig someday but jessica is a, a pretty awesome show in its own right uh ben if you if you want to talk a little bit about what what do you guys love so much about working on on shows that are targeted to to younger children it's really fun to look back um at your own childhood and remember the things that excited you that filled you with wonder um and tell stories about that and it's also just really so much fun working in animation because just the medium itself it was something that um yeah filled me with awe and made me imagine all sorts of worlds as a kid so it's just such a it, it's such a great opportunity to work in this space um but a lot of the time like the the funnest some of the funnest times is when we're just coming up with the story ideas for the shows and the episodes and we're in a room with the artists and the writers and um, sharing stories about our childhoods and drawing from that and that's just so much fun to just bond and also um, find something that's relatable hopefully to somebody else. And how, how do you guys uh, balance that out? Because you could really, you really, it's, it's your imagination is endless, especially with animation. You can, you can take a situation, you can add big Jessica, you can really, really go anywhere. How do you guys kind of contain that into, to make sure that it, it works for, for uh, kids, uh, Tiffany? Um, that's a good question, especially with the imagine imagine. 
the imaginary uh, characters that we've added. Um, so on like, uh, just like on a practical point of view, right? Like Craig of the Creek is beloved. Um, Jessica is a set beloved character that people are uh, familiar with. Not to add these other characters, um, these imaginary characters, Small Uncle and Big Jessica. Um, one example of like how we contained it was thinking about what is working, what do we like already about Jessica's uh, orig the original concept? Now, how do we grow that? Not change it, but like just add to it. So Small Uncle and Big Jessica are in Jessica's imagination, um, but we don't break the reality that we are already accustomed to. Other people can't see them. We understand that these folks exist in Jessica's mind. Also, they are not um, in any way able to directly affect her life. Um, so I think creating, you know, rules that are just for us that we we kind of stick to, but also um, maybe rules of a game, just parameters for us to play helps us sort of like stay in a realm that things don't veer all the way out that you don't rec that we don't recognize what we're doing we want to be able to feel like this is the same kid same world we're just maybe stepping into their bedroom whereas we were always playing in Craig's space we are in now Jessica's space and here's how her brain works and sp speaking of parameters I'm, I'm always curious especially with preschool shows uh, I've covered a few in the past how do you how do you guys control the pacing? Because you you only have so much time to to keep their attention to get them engaged in a story, uh, before you you can you can lose a kid for maybe maybe for good. Uh, Matt, if you want to yeah. talk a little bit on that, sure. Um, I think uh, I I I feel like in our experience, we've actually learned to slow down a little bit. Like we have to get to what the episode is about, but I think uh, some of our early uh uh things we learned early on in moving from doing Craig to doing Jessica is that uh we have to be able to slow down and make clear the story and the messages we're we're, we're sending to kids and once we're able to do that and uh have kids track the story then we can let loose with the jokes and everything but um yeah, I mean, that's just, I think that was our, our our big thing we had to pick up when adapting to the preschool audience. Yeah, it seems, it just seems like quite a challenge and, and it's always interesting to me to see you guys are able to overcome that. Uh, Lucia, where did you find your voice for Jessica? Did you try different different things? Uh, and then ultimately what what landed her voice that we, that we hear in the series? So Jessica's voice, is mostly my regular voice, but just you just add on that extra little like bang, you know? Sometimes I do silly voices, sometimes I do monster voice, sometimes I do like the high pitch, I'm so excited, squealing. There were, it's based off my normal voice, but then you add on all the different elements of like what's happening, what's she thinking, what's the situation like. That kind of thing. And it, what is it? What is it like also in the writers' room when when developing a show like this? Because we we see in the different episodes different tasks that that she's trying to accomplish. She's trying to she's trying to become a big kid. She's trying to become like the the role models in her lives, which are her family, which is great. Uh, but we see like bathroom etiquette. We see like her toys need to be clean in another one. Um, what is that process like to to determine these are these are the um. These, these are some of the tasks that we want to share with the world. Sure. Um, the writer's room experience on Jessica and on is the writer's room experience on Jessica is very similar to the one that Matt and Ben built on Craig and encouraged on Craig. We um, first, I think before getting to arrive to an episode, we first get to know each other in the room, understand where everybody's kind of, interests are what they're um but not necessarily in like um a checklist of getting to know you but just organically through conversation sharing our experiences so then on jessica that foundation of sharing our experiences sharing funny stories that have making each other laugh every day and also then thinking and listening actively what was so funny about that and also what 
affected you about this experience that you had when you were four? Um, and then getting way down to the boil uh, center of it that we all had an experience like this that had different um details but like the embarrassment was the same or the encouragement was the same or the happiness and joy was the same give that to Jessica um and also then to your point about the preschool pacing of it uh there is an easy way that we could present this um and say I am so uh my toy is so dirty I need to clean him but then there's a more specific way that then Lucia adds also with with her talent that we try to provide in the writer's room this very specific stress that is like um that is that is tailored to a person a person's personality that like um you use uh specific expressions to say i like cannot deal with how dirty and stinky you are um and and messing up and saying calling him small onion when he's small uncle and you feel that nicole is real when she's saying that she really didn't mean to say that but small uncle smells you know and that stank that you put on a line like that that's kind of something that happens in the writer's room whereas maybe in another universe we'd say jessica your toy is so smelly my dear we say girl that's stanky Mm -hmm. um that's that's kind of our vibe on jessica and craig yeah, it, those are those are some fun moments. A lot of a lot of stinky moments in a couple of those episodes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're smelly. <laughs> we're into smelly uh, moments. Um, one last question. I did want to ask you guys about the style of animation because we've seen it in a couple of series. Uh, ben, what makes this style of of animation so adaptable and so great for a lot of these shows? I think that um, you know, I think the look of Jessica is very special um and we wanted to create something that was just super in inviting um and that's a big thanks to our art team and actually uh, tiffany can really speak to that because she helps um hone that with our with our art team um sure um and yeah matt let me know if you have any thoughts on this as well that when we were um developing the show uh style for jessica um again speaking to what was working about craig side note we look a lot to what works on Craig because we wanted to invite whoever was interested in Craig to watch Jessica. And then if you like Jessica, there's more of it on Craig. And um, because we love this world and we want you to love this other world, it's a big little world um, that you can get into. So when we were working on the visuals, um, we thought long and hard about um, this warm feeling of magic that is in everyday spaces, whereas Craig's warm magical feeling is at the creek. Jessica's warm magical feeling is at home with her family. And uh, the folks who really brought this home uh, are art directors, Benjamin Anders, um, our design leads, uh, Nick Wynn and Santino Loscano. These are um, the really the core design team that like looked at this oh my gosh and scott forbes too i should mention um really brought this thing home to something that looks stunning uh and they they put a lot of thought into what every literally every scene that we see well thank you so much and for uh this uh big little call that we had here to talk a little bit about <laughs> jessica's big little world it's a uh, it's a fun show i'm sure um these colors are gonna love it um i liked it i had fun with it so uh um, Thank you for your time you. and getting some insight on it. And uh, we'll hope to see you all again. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Nice Thank you. you.